Okay, good evening, everyone. Welcome to another episode of Sequoia Lending Training on a Wednesday night. And if this is the first time that you are here with us, Sequoia is a commercial lending platform. We start off with as a lending pl platform, but actually right now we merge into what we call ourselves a business solution platform. And if you go to our website, you can see that we provide funding for any commercial real estates apartment buildings, retails, constructions, one to four units, so on and so forth. Uh, on top of that, we also provide something called business funding that has nothing to do with real estate. Uh, for example, working capitals, purchasing a business, equipment loans, buying a truck, uh, term loans, business line of credit, so on and so forth. So we also provide that type of funding. And we but the last but not least of the vertical is the business solution, business service that we provide. And you will see <clears throat> cost segregation. We provide uh, business credit for improved business credit. But the latest product that we have, we actually have this gentleman, Ross, on our platform a few weeks ago uh, to just kind of, kind of uh, talked about tax appeal, but today we are going to ask him to come in, come back to our platform to give us a detailed presentation on what that product really is. It's just because now in today's market, it makes perfect sense for uh, for property owners to really, really look into services as such as cost segregation or tax appeal because it can save them a lot of money that otherwise they wouldn't know. So, and one thing that we are also trying to attempt to do right now on our platform is to come up with what we call a platinum package. So oftentimes on a daily basis, we have a business owner, well, not business owner, but property owners that come to us asking for funding, whether it's purchasing a commercial property or uh, refinance on a commercial property, so on and so forth. They already own the commercial property. So instead of we just providing funding for them, we will see if we can put a package to to help our business uh, 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 property owners, such as tax appeal. If they own an apartment building, if they own a hotel, if they own um, uh, you know a retail office building, whatever that might be. So now, besides of we telling them the funding options, we also present to them, hey, we have something called tax appeal also to help you to lower your taxes or you know. Uh, uh, to get more more benefit for yourself for 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 your, for your building. So today we have also Ross again back onto our, back onto our platform. He's introduced to us by Mr. James Huang from EXP Realty. And again, we started the partnership with EXP already. So Ross is one of our service provider on this platform. So without further ado, Ross, the floor is yours. Please take as much time as you need to let us know what. What kind of good do you have? I yeah, appreciate it, Alan. Thank you. Hey, thank you guys for uh, giving us a little bit of your Wednesday night here, um, especially to talk about tax, which I will tell you, um, after having spent 20 years in this industry, um, to keep people engaged, you've got to make real estate taxes sexy. Uh, and I feel that that's something that I've uh, become uh, quite good at. So I'm going to try to keep you guys engaged uh, on this particular topic. I won't get too far into the technical weeds here, but I do want to talk to you about the opportunity and the partnership that we forged with Sequoia Lending. So my name is Ross Litkenhouse. Uh, I am the founder and CEO of Taxonix. Uh, Taxonix is a real estate tax technology platform, and that platform was birthed out of a consulting company that I also own, uh, which operates in the real estate tax consulting space. And so many of you, I'm sure, uh, most of you, probably all of you, uh, have been exposed to real estate taxes at some point or another. Working in the lending or transaction environment, just generally speaking, if you've been involved in real estate, you probably know uh, that real estate taxes are the single largest operating expense when you own and operate a piece of real estate. And there are big dollars uh, at stake. Uh, as most of you probably know, especially in this inflationary environment, <clears throat> we certainly have not gotten a respite or any relief on the tax front. But as market conditions have softened around particular asset types, we have started to see some relief. But most of that relief has come about in the way 
of tax appeals themselves. And so what is a tax appeal? A real estate tax appeal involves appealing a real estate tax assessment. And your tax assessment generally reflects the taxing jurisdiction's interpretation of the value of your real estate. And I have been appealing assessments for two decades in every corner of the country, Canada, the UK, globally. Uh, and I will tell you that there is opportunity to offer these services and offer this benefit and value to anybody that owns a piece of real estate and pays a real estate tax bill. In a down market for particular asset types like office, in COVID, when you had hospitality and retail that were taking their lumps, it was almost like shooting fish in a barrel. These tax appeals involve a few different things. Um, the first is you receive an assessment or an owner receives an assessment and you'll appeal that at usually a couple different administrative levels of appeal. And really anybody can do that. Um, if it gets quite contentious, we may end up in court, but we have multiple opportunities over a year to reduce someone's real estate tax assessment and save them money. And in the current market condition, I will tell you, I've been having done this for a couple of decades, the current market condition, it has never been better uh, to offer this as a service. The added benefit is that the way that I've structured my company and the way that we've structured our services, I'm going to tell you a little bit more about the secret sauce that we have. Our services are offered contingency based, which means that if we don't save somebody money, if we don't reduce their real estate tax bill, we don't get paid. There is no easier value proposition on planet Earth than I will save you money. And if I do, you pay me a little bit of it. And if I don't, you don't owe me anything. And that really is the crux of the service that, that we offer. Appealing a real estate assessment, by the way, in many cases, people think involves lawyers defending positions in court, people arguing over case precedent. That is absolutely not the case. Fundamentally, Reducing real estate taxes to a tax assessment appeal is an argument over an opinion of value. You guys all day, every day in a lending environment, agents, brokers, anybody that's involved in a real estate transaction, you, you are effectively operating inside of what is real estate worth? What is the value? So this platinum offering that Alan's talking about, you know, these business solutions, these business services in terms of your overall pitch, Adding real estate tax appeal as a solution or service is a very, very easy segue from any conversation into any conversation, out of any conversation around any of the other services that you are offering in this lending environment. And again, given current conditions and a rising interest rate environment and how the fundamentals of these real estate tax appeals take shape, it has never been easier for us to facilitate these on the behalf of property owners. Now, the partnership that we forged with Sequoia Lending is one of the first of its kind um, because my platform, Taxonix, was selling products out of our services company, but we launched this property tax marketplace, which has allowed us to partner with groups like yours to take these services and products out there, not actually have to offer them yourself but effectively funnel that work back into our platform to allow us to do that at scale. And the beauty of the way that we have offered this, and I, and I don't want to get uh, too much into the weeds of 100 years of history in real estate tax, which, by the way, if there's ever a bigger real estate tax nerd on the planet, it's me. And so if anybody ever has a question about anything real estate tax related, you can keep my contact information. You can reach out to me in the middle of the night if you want to talk about how taxes work in Montgomery County, Maryland, Newport News, Virginia, uh, Cuyahoga County, Ohio. I know we got folks, Cape May, New Jersey. New Jersey's got its own set of problems. It's a hot mess up there. Um, I'm happy to help you guys solve any of those uh, any of those problems. But the platform that I've built allows us to take these tax appeal services to any property type, any jurisdiction in the country. And so regardless of who you're talking to, within specific parameters on property size and property type, um, we can help reduce those taxes. Now, the partnership that we formed with Sequoia, and I mentioned before, that our services are offered based on the amount that we save somebody. You all will have a rev share built into your overall comp plan where when we benefit, when the person that you refers to us benefits and save money, we make money, 
you guys make money. So my goal is to give you guys enough information and a platform to be able to take this as a solution out to your network to drive that business back to us. And then we take care of everything else. Okay. A couple of things. One, we are only focused on commercial properties, not single family home, not condos, not townhomes. We're focused on commercial. Obviously, apartment buildings, office, hotel, retail, industrial, data centers, breweries, quarries, cheese factories, it doesn't matter. There's not a single commercial asset type on the planet or that exists in the United States, at least, that we have not facilitated an appeal on at some point or another. What we would like to do is for you all to target commercial properties that are valued above $5 million or more. Why is that important? Because there is an economies of scale. And even though we have used technology in our Taxonics platform to offer this in a much quicker, more cost-effective way, there is still a threshold there to make sure that everybody gets fed, right? And in a rev share program, it's important that there's enough food on the table for everybody to feed. So as you're out looking at your network of people that own real estate, again, anybody that has to pay a real estate tax bill, $5 million and above. Now, Alan has built into the Sequoia Lending website and the business solutions an intake form for you all to submit opportunities through to us. And it is really that easy. You have a conversation and that conversation in some cases is, hey, I know you're paying real estate taxes. You're probably not happy. We've got a company that we have partnered with that can review that real estate tax assessment and potentially save you money. You can go to this tax appeal dropdown on the Sequoia Lending website. You go down to apply now. It's got some basic information there. You'll fill out your internal intake form. Now it's going to work through that. Once that information is submitted, that's gonna take you to the specific partner form that we have put together with you all. All I need is client contact information, the person that you're talking to, client information, billing contact information, and this is the individual that can, that can fill this out themselves. They give us a little bit of info. It's gonna take them less than three minutes, probably less than two minutes to fill out this form. It gets submitted, goes directly into our Taxonics platform, and the rest takes care of itself. And we've worked with Alan to track this specifically. So as these opportunities come in, we'll know that they came from Sequoia. There will be a running ledger in terms of the savings that we generate. Once these savings are invoiced uh, to your contacts, to, to the clients, um, that, that, that invoice gets paid. And then that rev share moves directly through to Sequoia and then flows down into your specific comp plan. So your pitch is we'll help you save money. If we can't, you don't owe us anything. Taxonics is a nationally recognized firm. As a matter of fact, according to the Patent and Trademark Office, our technology that we built on our Taxonics platform is the only that exists today. The only that exists today. And the reason that we ended up partnering with Sequoia came through a relationship that I have with James Wong with EXP, who made that introduction, uh, made that introduction a couple years ago, and it led me to Alan. And Alan evangelized what he's doing with Sequoia and you all based on your target market and your network are exactly the types of folks that we want to work with for that particular market segment. Now, I mentioned before, I've got a consulting company and it's called Cavalry Real Estate Advisors. And this is important as well because it's all about making the pitch as to why they should be giving their business through you all to Taxonics. I birthed Cavalry Real Estate Advisors out of those couple de decades of experience, and that is very much a white glove, high value services company, right? We cater to the top 1% of real estate owners. The properties that you see in the flyby uh, when you're watching NFL, the properties that you read about in the business journal, the ones that the private equity firms are taking down at 100 to 2 million, 200 million to $500 million a clip, those are the type of white glove services that we offer through Cavalry. This platform was built out of those services. So the expertise, both from an engineering perspective, as well as the actual core competency, right? The subject matter expertise was birthed out of what I consider the best team to offer these services anywhere in the country. So this is not a, let me kind of send you through a, a high volume, low touch, low expertise group 
that doesn't know anything about real estate taxes. The team that built this, my team, are the best that the industry has to offer. We just cracked the code to be able to take these services down to the 80% of the market. My industry traditionally is very analog, very human capital intensive, very high touch, and only focused on that top 1% because it's contingency based, bigger is better, higher tax bills are better because they generate more savings and it generates a higher fee to your team. We built this platform to take those services out of that 1% down to the folks in the middle market, which is where most of the real estate transactions take place. And you guys know this, right? If you look at a broad cross section of the United States, North America, commercial real estate in general, it's folks in that one to $10 million range. That's the majority of the real estate transactions that take place per year. And it's about 11 to 12 million transactions. And eight, nine, 10 million of those are in that sweet spot, which is exactly where you guys are. That's why we built this platform to be able to take these services to companies like that, to owners like that, to investors like that. Because when I got involved in this business way back in the day, and this is the way that most of our industry operates, they only care about the big properties. They don't even want to talk to the folks that have properties valued less than $20 million because they got a lot of people that get paid a lot of money to provide these and they got to feed that machine. And so we set out to offer and build something differently to democratize access to these types of services. And that's what we've accomplished here. And now what I need, what our company needs, what our platform needs is an army of individuals that are in the real estate space to take this solution and this offering out to those folks to bring the same service, the same cost savings, and the same value proposition that everybody else in the industry has gotten up on Wall Street and offer that to folks in mainstream. And that's one of the reasons that we partnered with Sequoia because the only way to do that is to get this product in front of folks on the transaction side to introduce this when people are moving into a new property or refinancing an existing property so they understand the value proposition in a way that they have not been exposed to before. And so this product partner with you all will take a valuable service to your clients, to your network that I can almost assure you they have not had access to before and will allow us to generate through this partnership revenue and fees, which you all have not had the benefit of offering before with again, the easiest pitch you could possibly make. I will save you money. And if I don't, you don't owe me anything. And I can't think of a single person on planet Earth that doesn't like that pitch. And so that's why I'm here to present this opportunity to you all. And we have tried to make it as easy as possible to give you the tools that you need to take this opportunity to your network and all of us here collectively benefit. So I'm gonna pause there for a minute, take a breath, maybe a sip of water uh, and answer some questions. And Alan, if there's something that I've missed here, uh, in the conversations that we've had over the many months developing this partnership, uh, yep. please let me know. Absolutely. Well, let me jump on with the uh, first question right here, and I'm sure that a lot of us will, would like to find out also. So with the Sequoia platform, obviously, as a loan consultant, we do what we best is to go out there to generate leads, whether it's a commercial lead or a, a business funding a, a, a product, whatever that might be. And it's the same thing. Uh, our job is to go out there to generate leads to plug into the tax appeal product. However, uh, Ross, if you don't mind, share with us once a deal that goes into your office, just let us a rundown what is going to happen. So at least, you know, for just for, for educational purpose, let us know what that, what that workflow looks like. Got it. All right. So you have presented this opportunity to someone in your network, right? They have gone to that intake form. It's been signed. They've been, they filled it out. They signed it up. They've signed us up or they've signed themselves up information comes through to us uh, in Taxonics. We take that information, and if there's information that's missing, additional questions that we need, uh, we will reach out directly to that contact. The way that the tax appeal works is that information comes through. We will look at the property, the location, determine when the appeal deadline is, and it may be, it may have passed, uh, it may be at some point in the future, but that's okay. We've got a massive database of information to, ter excuse me, to determine exactly when that assessment is due, all the rules of, of the uh, of the game in order to facilitate that tax appeal. So it comes through. We work directly with your contact or that individual that has signed up. We facilitate that appeal. 
That appeal typically involves a couple different things. Um, we will submit an application on their behalf. And the reason that we're able to do that is because your contact, your client, uh, your, your uh, person in your network has also signed a letter of authorization or an agency authorization or power of attorney. It's, it's called many different things in many different jurisdictions. That allows us to work on their behalf with the jurisdiction. We submit that appeal. We will take it through the various levels of the administrative appeal process. The first level of that appeal process typically involves us presenting evidence, which we have put together in an analysis and evaluation that we have developed based on the information that, that, that your client has provided to us, to an assessor, meaning the individual that has actually put the value on the tax roll meaning they have gone to your client and said, we think that your property is worth $10 million. Our job is to take the information that we have developed through our platform that we've gotten through third parties and from your client, the, the property owner, to build that case to convince that assessor that it's worth less than $10 million. If we're successful and we feel that we have reduced the assessments, what we think uh, is equitable, what we think is fair, then the, uh, then, then, then the process stops there. We've generated tax savings. We produce an invoice. That invoice gets sent to the property owner, your client, your contact. They pay that invoice. And then our rev share moves on through Sequoia. And then that funnels down through your comp plan. <clears throat> if we're not happy with the results of the first level, we'll go to the second level of the administrative appeal process. That administrative appeal process at the second level is typically a board, right? It is a group of individuals that have either been appointed or been elected to serve as effectively an arbiter between us on behalf of the property owner, your client, and the assessor, which is the taxing jurisdiction or the, or the assessor's office. We will present our case against the assessor or the appraiser that's assigned on behalf of the jurisdiction, and the board will decide who is right and who is wrong. We are successful more than 90% of the time through the administrative appeal process, right? So, if we decide to file a case, if we think a case is worthwhile, and I should be clear, not every client that signs up with our service has a property that is right for appeal every year. That's okay, because once someone is in our system, we are tracking them on an annual basis. A new assessment comes out the following year or in the next assessment cycle. If we think that it's overvalued at that point, we file an appeal. So this is a bring someone in, they're in the system, we will track it and look for opportunities on a go forward basis. Now back to the administrative levels of the appeal process. That's where most of the magic happens. That's where most of our reductions are achieved. If we aren't as successful at those administrative levels of the appeal process and there is enough meat on the bone, we can go to the third level of appeal. And in some places there are four levels, but we won't get into semantics. Um, that, that ultimate level of the appeal process is a judicial process where we will file to court. We are effectively suing the tax jurisdiction on behalf of the property owner, right? To take it to that final level of appeal process. And then that gets into all sorts of things related to appraisals and discovery and potentially depositions and interrogatories. But that is kind of the nuclear option. Very, very few cases actually end up in court. And I like to say in most cases, if we've done our job, we don't need to end up in court, right? We're getting it done at that earliest level of the appeal process. Most of our appeal results can be generated between 45 and 90 days upon filing. Now, depending on where your network is, depending on what jurisdictions you all have contacts in or where those properties are located, there's obviously a ton of variability. And this is something important to note. There are over 3,000 different taxing jurisdictions in the United States. Each one of them does things a little bit differently. Appeal deadlines, assessment methodology, tax rates, all of those things are very different, but that's okay. That's what our company and that's what our platform takes care of. So we can handle these appeals anywhere. Now, again, not every not every property is an opportunity every year, but that's all right. Uh, this is partly a volume game. So if you've got someone that is paying a tax bill, it's assessed over $5 million and they have interest in us reviewing it, that can be submitted through that. Now, I do want to point something out here for those of you that are operating in, in various places throughout the state. There are a list of states where there is a higher probability of generating higher savings, and Alan has taken that information and put it right there on the website under the dropdown. Maryland, Texas, Florida, North Carolina, South Carolina, Georgia, Virginia, 
Connecticut, Washington, D.C. I could spend weeks talking to you about the nuances of these particular states and why they are better for tax appeals. But I'll give you really two, really three things that you should be that you should be thinking about. The higher the tax rate, obviously, the higher potential for savings. The longer the assessment cycle, the higher probability of generating savings and maximizing savings over a longer period of time. In a place like Maryland, they reassess every three years. So if we save somebody a buck in the first year, we're actually saving them, call it $3 over that time period. So that magnifies the savings that we generate, which means there's a higher fee. In the Carolinas, in some cases, they don't assess properties, but every five to eight years. So if we appeal an assessment in the first year of that cycle, right, we're generating savings over the entire period of that assessment cycle, which means that we're not generating fees off of one year, it's multiplied times five and eight. So we have the ability to make more money off of those savings if it's a longer period of time over that assessment cycle. Texas is another great state, even though they reassess every year, they've got a very high property tax rate, similar to Florida, because they don't pay income taxes in Texas and Florida. So most of those jurisdictions make most of their money off of property taxes, which means the tax rate's high, which means that we have a better opportunity uh, to generate savings. So there are better states that are better hotspots. That means that we can generate more savings, which result in higher fees, which means higher revenue share put into your pocket. Alan? Okay, great. Wonderful. Thank you so much. And uh, I'm sure that the second question is coming, uh, saying that, hey, you know, currently right now, you only stay 11 states that you can do business. What about the rest of the country? Um, we discussed this already, but again, I'm sure that a lot of people want to hear directly from you. What about California? What about New York? What about all those other states? Got it. So there are some states that start as more of a judicial process, right? Anytime, you guys know, anytime you got to get lawyers involved, things get more expensive, right? This is all about maximizing savings opportunities. So while we will do work in places like New York and New Jersey, which involve uh, more of a legal process, the savings are typically going to be limited. Doesn't mean that we want to shy away from that, but I'm just being upfront with you all about where you're going to be able to generate the most savings and the most fee for your clients. California, while it's a big state, there are a lot of property owners there and there's a lot of, uh, of money that transacts. California is unique because they have something called Prop 13. So unless a property has been recently constructed or has been recently purchased, if you've got a property owner that has been sitting on a property for many, many years, right? Prop 13 caps the amount of taxes that increase on a year over year basis. So if a property doesn't trade for 20 years, typically the value that's taxed is below market value. Now in a place like California, if you have somebody that bought a property, call it 2015 to 2019, or 2015 to 2020, and now they're buying or now it's selling, there is a chance that that property is selling at a value that's below the current taxable value. So it could be an opportunity. But generally, California, because the real estate tax growth is capped, doesn't present as good of an opportunity. Doesn't mean that we won't look at it. Uh, but it just to temper your expectations, California is not a place where we make a ton of money offering real estate tax appeals. The states that we've listed, D.C., Maryland, Texas, Florida, Tennessee, North Carolina, South Carolina, Georgia, Florida, Connecticut, and Washington State are all places that I know based on experience and how we track savings can be good states. Where does Ohio stand? Ohio is interesting. Um, Ohio also like Pennsylvania, and that's a great question. I don't know who asked that, but that is a great question because it leads me into hey. – I'm sorry? Dave, Dave Rose, yeah. it, leads us, uh, it leads us into a specific specific circumstance, and this is something you should be aware of, right? It's not just when people buy or sell properties uh, that they're hit with real estate tax bills, and it's not just on an annual basis that you get your regular assessment that leads to higher real estate tax bills. Ohio, like Pennsylvania, has something called reverse appeals, which means the school districts or the local jurisdictions can challenge the values that sit on the tax roll to try to get the assessments increased. 
outside of the normal process. So it's a way for them to go through the tax rolls and say, you know what? This happens in Ohio, Dave. Jurisdiction school district says, I don't think that assessment's high enough. I don't think that we're getting enough taxes. So we want to hire an attorney to fight the assessment to try to increase the taxes on the property owner. That's an appealable event. So we will do work in Ohio and Pennsylvania. And so one of the things that you need to be mindful of is that anytime you're talking to somebody, even if it's not a regular assessment, it's like, hey, if you get an assessment of any kind from a jurisdiction, right, whether it's a what we call a regular assessment or not, and you're not happy with it, let us take a look. Ohio, that happens all the time. So we will do work in Ohio. Sometimes it involves us having to get our attorneys involved. By the way, we have plenty of attorneys on, on, on staff and even folks in local jurisdictions that we work with that are part of our, our consultant marketplace and our attorney marketplace because we will match these properties up with local consultants and attorneys to get this work done if needed. Um, Ohio is one of those places uh, and they can be particularly aggressive. And Ohio assesses in multi-year as well. So I do like Ohio, but it's just not as it's not as a uh, it's not as straightforward, Dave. Um, but I won't you know I won't throw the baby out with the bathwater in a place like Ohio. Same with Pennsylvania. So okay, thank you. Good question. Uh, well, got another question. So let's say you're saying that in Maryland, once you do the audit, uh, it's going to be good for three years. I mean, not audit, but the uh, the tax appeal is going to be good for three years. And taxes is like every year. So what do you do after three years? Do you automatically would do the appeal again or what? what is the what is the plan? Oh, we, we have them in our system. As soon as the next reassessment comes out three years later, we pull that assessment, we look at it, and we immediately reach out to the property owner and say, hey, remember when we saved you $40,000 uh, three years ago? We'd love that opportunity again. Send us this information. We'll evaluate it very quickly. And we'll let you know whether we think there's an opportunity. And we'll let you know how much we think we can save you. So we automatically go through that process. Once somebody's in our system, they're in there, right? Unless we reach out and they say, hey, thanks, but no thanks. I don't want you to save me money or I've sold the property or whatever it is. We're automatically going to have them back in the hopper. And we're going to look for another opportunity in the future. So does that mean that every time when you assess and get the client saving and we got pay? <laughs> if it's a new, <laughs> if it's a client, you guys will get rev share for five years. Okay, great. That's all we, we need to hear. Five years. So okay. if it's after three years, we haven't exceeded that five-year period and we appeal them again. Yeah. Even if, even if the appeal that we start, right, and that second, what we call triennial, so let's run a scenario. We'll use Maryland as an example, Alan. I like this. I like this. Uh, I like the game theory aspect of this. Okay. Yep. So you guys bring us somebody, and let's say it's state of Maryland. We file an appeal in the first year. We generate savings over three years, right? Everybody gets paid. New assessment comes out three years later. We look at it and say we can file an appeal. All right. I file an appeal in that fourth year. All right. Let's say it's a very contentious case. And we don't get all the money we want for another three years. So now it's been six years. Doesn't matter. You still get paid because it was filed within that five-year window. Doesn't matter when we resolve it. And by the way, folks, I have some cases in New Jersey that we filed five years ago that still have not resolved. Every year we tack on a new tax year. So when we get to the end of that five-year period, we've got five years worth of, of tax appeals that we started five years ago off of one contact that has resulted in five years worth of savings. That all falls within the rev share that we have with Sequoia. Absolutely. This is beautiful. So guys, please remember you bring in one client and again, we can get paid for the next five years. So the next question I have, unless other people have any other questions, the next question I have is that are there any, would, would, would the client be ever got audited for, for doing something like this? No, no. This is all based on opinion of value, okay? This is not an income tax play. This is not a this is not a cost seg play. This has nothing to do with the federal government or tax law per se. This is an argument over what is my property worth, right? We make that determination as to whether we think it is fair or not, right? There are instances, don't get me wrong, there are instances where and I've seen this, people will challenge an assessment and say we think that 
you told me my property is worth $10 million. I don't think it's worth that. And an assessor says, well, guess what? Based on the information provided, we think it's worth $12 million. So we're going to increase your assessment. We know those pitfalls. We know those states and those jurisdictions where they're legally allowed to do that. And we mitigate that risk or we don't challenge it. That's the benefit of taking it through our platform as opposed to just saying, go file an appeal yourself, right? We look at that risk profile and we determine whether or not something should be appealed and whether that there is actually an opportunity to reduce that assessment. But this is not like filing the income tax return. This is an argument and a debate over value of what real estate is worth within the confines of the rules and regulations and methodology of how real estate is appraised and assessed. That's what we do. And that's how our platform is constructed. Great. Uh, Joseph, I see your hand is up. Yeah, I had a question for you, Ross. Yes. Say on an average deal, like a $5 million deal, what would the fees roughly be to the client on our savings? Like, is it a percentage you guys base it off of? Is it a flat fee it's based off of? What's yeah. the client looking at? It's a, it's a percentage. Um, our fees typically range depending on the size of the property. And, and I, I do say that there is some flexibility there. Obviously, the bigger the property, we could have lower the fee. But generally speaking, um, our contingency fee is around 40% of savings. So we save somebody a dollar, we're keeping 40 cents. Okay. And is there any cost if you don't get them that savings to them no. for going through the work? Nope, no cost. Okay. No cost. Now, do you need to order an appraisal or something like this to, to justify the value? Great question. Uh, in most cases, no. There are some states, depending on the level of the appeal process, where an appraisal is required. That's why we also try to stay out of the third level, which I mentioned, which is going to court. In most places, if you file an appeal to court, you will be obligated to produce a third-party appraisal. Now, I have MAIs on staff. Our MAIs are, MAIs are the highest accredited level you can get as an appraiser, USPAP, um, Appraisal Institute, uh, qualified. So we have appraisers on staff. However, if you get to court, in many cases, you have to commission an additional third-party appraisal, which will cost money, which is why we avoid that. And we run a cost-benefit analysis if we get to that level and an appraisal is required. The valuations and the evidence that we produce, and by the way, it, this is not a, you know, somebody signs up, we take it through the appeal process and we just show up, you know, and, and ask for a favor. The evidence that we put together looks very much like an appraisal. We use, we do direct capitalization analysis. We do a sales comp approach. Uh, to valuation. We will also do a replacement cost, less depreciation uh, cost valuation for this. So we use all of the, the basically the three levels, or I should say the, the three approaches to valuation as an appraiser, right? Income capitalization, sales comp, uh, and, and cost valuation. So we are putting together evidence and information that supports that value the same way that you would support it a value for a lend, you know, as a lender or underwriting, right? Commissioning and appraisal. So we put that information together um, if we have to, if we have to commission a third-party appraisal uh, as part of that uh, that court proceeding, we will do that. But generally, we're showing up with the evidence in hand, approaching that valuation for that property within not only the confines of of traditional um, uh, uh, appraisal and valuation, but also the methodology for the particular jurisdiction, because some of them operate in a slightly different way than the way most of us on the private sector will look at. Uh, evaluating something as an investment. So it's not a, it's not, you wouldn't have to buy an appraisal. We're using an appraisal process, but if we get to that point, we obviously will address that and look at the cost benefit of doing so. I see. Now, one, once the appeal is successful, how do they see the savings? So does it mean that the next tax bill that comes in and will automatically drop to a certain mm -hmm. number? Yep. So, they will know that we have generated savings because when they receive our invoice for our services, by the way, we don't just do the work, send them an invoice. We're in communication with the property owner. It's, it, you know, we, we like to engage with the property owner to let them know and keep them updated on exactly where things are. Um, 
all of these reductions that are achieved through these levels of appeal, regardless of the level of appeal, there's going to be some written correspondence received from the taxing jurisdiction that says, as a result of your appeal, we have reduced the assessment from $10 million down to $8 million, right? Depending on when that appeal is resolved, will determine whether or not their next tax bill reflects the savings or whether they actually get a refund, right? In some cases, you appeal an assessment, that assessment may not be resolved until after the tax bill that's based on that assessment is actually paid, which means that you would receive a refund or they would receive a credit against a future tax bill. So there is formal documentation from the jurisdiction indicating the success of the appeal and what that means in terms of tax savings. And our invoices that we send to our clients are not sent until we have that formal documentation, right? And that, and we also show them exactly how those savings are going to be realized, either a refund or savings shown in the way of a reduced tax bill at some point in the future. Got it. Okay, anyone, any other questions that you might want to jump in? Feel free. Hey, this is Mo. Uh, quick question. Uh, you said five million was the sweet spot. Yeah, above five million, Mo. Okay. Five can, million and above. Can that be um, in a bundle? Uh, it really needs to be on a property by property basis. Now, if it's multiple parcels for an individual property, that's okay. Oh. But we need the individual. We need the property, right? So this is and this is kind of a nuanced moment. Actually, I'm glad you asked that question. Um, the way we look at properties, I say we, those of us that are helping people buy and sell or secure lending, you know, we talk about a property. You know, we're talking about basically the economic entity, right? So think about a, let's say you're helping somebody buy a shopping center, right? Or you're you're helping somebody secure lending to buy a shopping center, right? You're thinking about the shopping center, the taxing jurisdiction may look at that shopping center and actually have three tax parcels or four tax parcels or two tax parcels assigned to that shopping center, okay? So you're looking at it saying that shopping center is worth 5 million bucks. The taxing jurisdiction says, yeah, it's worth 5 million, but it's across three parcels, right? So when somebody gets a tax bill, right, they may get three tax bills for the same shopping center because the jurisdiction has got three parcels assigned to it. We see that with mixed use properties all the time. You know, and you may have a shopping center or a, or an office building that the, the building sits on two tax parcels. One tax parcel carries all the value. Maybe they got a second tax parcel, you know, that's an easement or it's storm rot or retention, you know, or it's just a little bit of land value associated with it. So it, the property needs to be $5 million, but that may involve a whole bunch of tax parcels that are under $5 million that add up to $5 million, if that makes sense. Understood. Yep. Yep. Okay. It's a good question, Mo. Thank you. I'm glad you asked that because that that does create confusion in some cases for people. Thank you. I got a question. Other than trying to find Donald Trump as a client, where would you start? <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. I love that question. I just I was just interviewed by somebody about the whole Mar-a-Lago, how much is it worth versus a tax bill. It's a whole it's a whole nother that's a pot that's a podcast episode, man. Um, where would you start? So uh I generally do most of the networking in other real estate organizations where property owners hang out, right? National Association of Industrial and Office Properties, NAOP, ULI, Urban Land Institute. Um, any one of your local organizations where real estate owners hang out, uh, that's where I go. You guys have, a, I'm, I'm sure, a great sales and marketing training program of how you go about and find owners. It's anybody that owns real estate right? Anybody that's paying a tax bill. Um, I will also uh, network with brokers that are in the business of helping folks buy and sell buildings. Uh, they're, they're a great network too. And I haven't, and I even told uh, Alan, I was like, I got 15 minutes to do this presentation. We're already on 45. Um, I also have another product that we sell uh, on the transaction side, um, which is, is, is a much shorter lead time and is much easier to monetize. And that's real estate tax forecasting. We have a product for property owners, people that are buying uh, buildings or developing buildings uh, when they've got to figure out what their real estate li tax liability is going to be once they buy this property or once they develop it. And they use that for underwriting. They use that to work with the banks. They use that to give to their investors and appraisers. Uh, we have a tax forecasting product that we can spit out uh, in no time. And we charge a flat fee for that. 
uh, and that's anybody that's looking to buy or build, um, you know, may have that need. The bigger the property, the more important it is. Um, so that's another product, which I can talk about at another point in time. Um, but that's very much a product you buy off the shelf. They submit it. We provide it. It's turned around in a week. Uh, and that gets an invoice sent and everybody gets paid. Um, but but uh, to, to answer your question about where you would network, it's anywhere pro where property owners go. Um, one of the great ways uh, to, to generate some of these leads or to go to your local business journal or whatever publication you follow for people that are buying uh, real estate. And, and again, I know you guys are on the lending front, so you're trying to get there before somebody buys it. But once somebody's bought it, they're going to have a tax problem. You can pick up the phone and say, hey, I saw you bought. Love to help you buy your next deal and secure lending for your next deal. But we can help you save money on the deal that you just bought. Uh, because when you buy a property, something happens to your assessment. Sometimes it goes up, sometimes it goes down. Most of the time it goes up. And so that's a great opportunity to get in front of somebody uh, and tell them that you can help them save money. A great idea. Ross, great can idea. you go to your county assessor and find this information? Can you go to the county assessor? So most jurisdictions, if they've got a robust public data source, you can find out who's recently purchased a property. The problem with that being they don't always provide contact information, right? So you're going to have to go to another third party to, or another data source to figure out how you actually get in touch with that person. Because, you know, some, I own real estate and I keep real estate under LLCs that are to some PO box or my attorney or somebody else is a registered agent. So people can't call me all the time. So you got to, you got to figure out, you know, how you get to that kind of six degrees to Kevin Bacon to be able to reach out to that person. But yeah, there, you can get some of this information from public data sources. Now, I can assure you, if you pick up the phone and call a county assessor and say, hey, I want to talk to people so I can appeal their assessments, they may not be happy about that and be as forthright and provide you information. <laughs> but brokers, appraisers, um, anybody that's in the business of helping people transact real estate, they're good people to know. Um, and brokers, real estate brokers, commercial brokers that help people buy and sell, uh, they love nothing more than saying, I got somebody that can help you save on real estate taxes. They'll take your name out there and put you in front of a hundred other people. That was the way I got started in the business. When I was competing against the 800 pound gorillas, I said, let me go to real estate brokers and say, hey, I'll make you look good. Tell your client once they buy this property or before they buy it, I'll tell them what their taxes are going to be. And when they buy the property, I'll help them save money in the process. Just let them know before they buy. And they spread it like wildfire. They're like, I got a guy that'll help you save money. Won't cost you a dime. Give him a call. If you can't save you money, it won't cost you a dime. Give him a call. Brokers love to talk about people they know. And let me show you how to find these people. Okay. That's right. Please, everybody get familiarized with this particular website right here. It's called loopnet.com. This is all the commercial properties. They will put it, put it up here. So now this is how you find these people. You come to loopnet.com, you go to for sale, okay? And let's say you want to put in Washington, D.C., okay? Okay, Washington, D.C. Search. Now, right here, you put in the price. You say $5 million. Voila. So you search all the property for you. So you look at this guy right here, $6.5 million. This one's 7.7 .7 million. This one's 7.7 .7 million, 7.3 million. Okay, now what do you do once you find this property? Just like Ross said, you, you have no idea who the who the seller is. But guess what? If you click on it, you would know who the agent is. It has the agent's name and information right here. So why don't you give them a call? Mess, message them. So you will see it's all over the place. So guys, there's so much tools that you can use but if you just want to focus on one thing loopnet.com you can come here all day long you can search all over the place whatever that might be and at the end of the day this is your resources you and let me say this alan let me let me say central washington dc if you guys are going to spend your time generating leads anywhere for tax appeals go to washington dc and maryland all right those two locations we make money all the time, hand over fist in those two places. 
Washington, D.C., and Maryland. If you're going to dial for dollars and you're going to make connections, I don't care where you're located, California, Cape May, New Jersey, Ohio, uh, Newport News, doesn't matter. Call into those markets, find those contacts, find me commercial properties in Washington, D.C., and Maryland, and we'll make money. Yep. Again, I love those two states. It's where I started my career. I fell completely ass backwards into those and I have, I have made a, a very, very good living and built some really good companies off of doing tax appeal work in those two in those two places. I, I like to say Washington, D.C. is a state, but federal government doesn't look at it that way. Yep. <laughs> Maryland and Washington, D.C., those are two of the greatest places on, on, on planet Earth for us to do tax appeal work. Right. So, Ross, I, I don't want to sound like I don't know or am stupid, but I thought that you said $5 million was the tax assessment for the property. Correct. Not the, is, 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 isn't that two, th two different things? So, uh, so tax, yes, that's a great, uh, that's a great clarifying question, Damon. Great clarifying question. The assessment and the value can be two different things, right? So what I want you guys to think about is the value of the property because the tax assessment can actually be less than 5 million. It's the value of that threshold, right? So when the market value, right? So think of a put your, that's a, I'm really glad you asked that question because that can be confusing depending on the jurisdiction because some places have ratios where they go out and they value your property and they say, if this property sold today, it's worth 5 million. But our tax assessment ratio is 70%, right? Like Connecticut, right? They got a ratio. So the tax assessment may show a lower value. I want you guys to think about if this property were to sell today, is it worth $5 million or more? That's what I'm looking for. Don't worry about all the, the, the ratios and the assessments and all the other kind of confusing crap that ends up on a tax bill and an assessment. That's our job. You guys just, when you go out into the market, think, is this property, would this sell for more than $5 million? You know, Or did it sell for more than $5 million? That's what you should, th should be thinking about. And Damon, if it's $4,900,000 in value in your mind, don't. It's okay. Send it through. It's okay. Thank you for I'm the clarification. Thank you for the clarification because I was befuddled because I'm trying to figure out well how in the world I'm gonna find out what the tax if the tax assessment assessment is over five million dollars. Yeah, so don't don't, thanks don't for sweat that. I'm glad you asked that. Yeah, don't don't you don't get lost in the weeds on that. That's okay. That's that's for me to figure out. You just be thinking, is this property worth five million bucks or not? Great. And uh, what's the uh, what was the purpose of getting the, the certification? Uh, the certification for you all is so you can actually properly sell this. And that's something else I should have mentioned. We have a, a course that we offer that's going to allow you to actually properly explain the value proposition. So it trains it trained. It gives you the training that you need and gives you an explanation because what I just gave you over the last. Fifty three minutes. Uh, is really just scratching the surface. So I want everybody to take that certification, which allows you to go out and properly sell this. And that's an important component. I'm glad you mentioned that. Um, and that's, that is a requirement for us. We put together a training and education course um, for you all to go out, take that course so you can get certified to actually go out and offer these services. Um, because I, I, we don't need folks running around that, um, you know, don't have the, can't speak the proper language is what I would say and make the actual proper pitch. Uh, so when those folks come in and they actually buy our service, they know what they're getting. Thank you. Is that class available online or? Yes, it is. It? We offer it through our website uh, and then we offer, offer it. We also offer it as a CE course through Exceed CE. I'm not sure if, uh, how many folks on here are getting CE as an agent or broker. Um, but we offer that through our taxonics course, uh, and and Alan can share that in the uh, the message. Yep. So yeah, we are working with uh, Ross on the uh, certification class, so to uh, pull onto our platform. So that is coming. Okay. Okay, guys. Well, well, thank you so much, Ross, for the uh, the in depth explanation of the, what this program is and open up another door for us. And definitely, we will see a lot of opportunity, especially the line of work that we do. We are already talking to business owners. We are already talking to property owners and a lot of you already experienced where business uh, um, 
a property owner come to us looking for various different type of fundings, whether it's constructions or refinance or value add, whatever that might be. It's very easy, straightforward to 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 transition into tax appeal and let them know that we offer sir, we also offer this service as well. Okay. Yep. So again, guys, thank you so much for Thanks, joining another thank you all. Uh, episode. Thank you so much, Ross. And now, guys, Ross. one more time. Thursday night, from now on, every Thursday night, we have sales call. Mo is the one that is going to share with us how do we go out there to do the sales call. It's on Thursday night. And also Friday night, we have the Friday night huddle. So that is not a training. It's more for us to get together whenever you have time, come to our Zoom, come to our room. And, you know, we we'll talk about different topics and share with, you know, what have you learned, what, you know, your success story, whatever that might be. That is on Friday night. Um, so again, we all know that every Monday night we have the opportunity call every Monday night. So I start strongly suggest everybody to start go out there to start inviting people to come to our uh, opportunity call every Monday night. So on our platform, as you can see, we are adding more and more and more service. And quite frankly, I believe every single one of these service and product that we have our platform is not like any other people can get it. Text appeal. I don't even know who's doing it out there. Uh, all the commercial product that we have, all the commercial services that we have, it's, you know, it's it's very, very unique. Our platform is very unique, and that's why we're attracting a lot of people. And guess what, ladies and gentlemen, I will have more and more products onto our platform very, very soon. Just, and let me just link a little bit. <laughs> the next product, the next product that is going to be on our platform, it's energy product. Right. We will be able to provide solar panels, commercial solar panels, EV Good. stations, anything that is related to commercial green energy product will be on our platform. And again, we are working on the detail behind the scene with the service provider very soon. He will be here to talk to us about the green energy product. So again, Think about this. Uh, that is the that is that is not the future. It's already the reality right here. So many states actually going toward that uh, that space, and many many states out there. You see a lot. You see more and more EV vehicles on the road. But what is lacking? The EV charging station is absolutely lacking these days. Okay, so that is one product that will be on our platform. The next product that will be on our platform, again, we are working on the details right now, is called modular construction products. Modular construction product that you can utilize this product to not just build single family home. You can utilize this product to build retail space, hotels, so on and so forth. And the good thing is that, the most important thing is that we have a lender that is already able to fund something like this. The biggest issue out there with all these different type of construction product is that, hey, nobody's funding it. There's a lot of container homes out there. There's a lot of tiny homes out there. There's a lot of uh, a box home out there. But quite frankly, nobody's funding something like this. But with what we are about to push out, we have a lender that is already funding something like this. So again, ladies and gentlemen, that's all we have for tonight. And just want to leak out a little bit and let you guys feel a little bit excited about what we have. But reality is that, hey, regardless how many product and services that we have on our platform, if you do not utilize it, if you do not utilize it, it's not going to help. That money is not going to just fall into your lap. You got to go out there, utilize all these services and products and whatever that might be to benefit yourself and your family. So ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much. And I see you tomorrow. Good night. Good night, Alan. Good night, Alan. Thank you. Thank you, Alan. Good thank night. You. Thank you, Alan. Good night.